and welcome back to Aging Well, monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb, and with me today, Annie and Nancy. Our subject today is going to be memory cafes, both the trend of memory cafes across the region and also an exciting new memory cafe that we have here in the Cambridge Somerville area. But before we get started on that, um, I'd like to introduce my guests, learn a little bit more about you guys. My name is Nancy Quick Gonzalez, and I'm the Memory Cafe Coordinator with uh, Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Welcome. And I'm Annie Fowler. I'm the Director of Clinical Services at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Glad to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. So I learned about Memory Cafes about six months ago, uh, and I thought it was really interesting, but I'm guessing there's probably a lot of folks out there who still aren't familiar, so I thought maybe uh, discussing the basic uh, premise of memory cafes might be a good place to start. Hey, yeah, it's a good place to start. Uh, so memory cafes is a, a warm, welcoming environment, um, free of the stigma of the disability. Don't have to have dementia or Alzheimer's. It's really for people with forgetfulness and memory loss. And it's a way to get together in a social setting. Um, some refreshments, some activities, and just to get more friends and develop a, a caregiver circle as well too for the caregivers. Excellent. You have some great activities. We just started I think a month or two ago but you've you've really been awesome about putting the word out about what we have for the activities in it. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was just going to add that uh, every memory cafe, then there's memory cafes across the country at this point, but mm -hmm. everyone's very unique to the individuals that are coming to that cafe and to the, you know, to the culture and the community in that community. Um, so we encourage, of course, people to come to try, you know, to come and visit our memory cafe, but to know that there are, you know, several different memory cafes in the area and they're all a little bit different with different activities, different environments and things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, some meet at libraries, some meet at museums, some meet in senior centers, some meet in restaurants or coffee shops. Mm -hmm. So it's really unique to the communities. Yeah. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. you mentioned social event, social interaction. It sounds like that's the overarching theme here. Can you tell me a little bit about that sort of focus, why um, that seems to be key to the concept? Well, I mean, it it helps people feel comfortable and it kind of normalizes the whatever level of stage that they might be in of dementia or Alzheimer's, mm. but it also gives them an opportunity to just have everyday conversations. Mm. It can be about something that they enjoy, something that they didn't like about their trip over or uh, what they read in the newspaper or on the news. Um, mm. And so it's an opportunity for other people to get involved with each other that may not have normally come across each other. Mm -hmm. And then for, I think it's really important for the caregivers as well, mm -hmm. the people who come with them to get connected with other people who are caregivers. A lot of times when someone is starting to experience some kind of memory loss, they may tend to start to isolate um, because they know something is going on um, and, and they're uncomfortable with it. And likewise, their caregivers might start to isolate as well. It might be hard to go to a restaurant if someone's experienced memory loss and maybe having some behavioral symptoms along with it. So this is an environment that you know is very welcoming to, to anyone um, you know, whether they're the, uh, a care partner or an individual with memory, memory loss, and we make sure that the activities and the conversation and the space that they're in is, is comfortable for, for people to kind of help to avoid some of that isolation that may happen. Wow, that's excellent. And it's interesting, when we had our dementia conference a few months back, I, I got a quick history of memory cafes. Um, and it sounds like it's something that's relatively new. Can you tell me a little bit about how this trend has grown and how to the point where it's now here and we can enjoy it? Well, I mean, it may be fairly new in the state of Massachusetts, but it originally started in 1997 in mm -hmm. England, so it's 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. In fact, they just had an anniversary celebration, which is really a wonderful thing. Um, there is an agency, Jewish Family and Children's Services, that is kind of our spearheader for the state of Massachusetts, and they help um, new cafes get off the ground, but they also provide ongoing support. Um, so they've been doing cafes for almost four years now. Mm -hmm. And so they're part of that original movement. And 
our latest meeting, which is um, coordinators, we get together on a quarterly basis, there are 70 plus cafes throughout the state of Massachusetts and two bilinguals. That's great. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And speaking of cafes and certain mm -hmm. cafes, Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, happy to recently announce that we're adding one uh, in Cambridge, the Cambridge Connections Cafe. Um, and that's actually not the first one in Cambridge. Uh, you have some first-hand knowledge of that. Yeah, so um, the first one um, started last year in 2016 in uh, East Cambridge on Gore Street, and it's been going for about a year and a half now. Um, every, like, like we said earlier, every group is different, and so some groups are very large and some groups are very small, and that group is very small, mm -hmm. and they like it that way. They all look for each other each month, um, and we've provided a wide range of activities. But I'm really excited about the new opportunity on the other side of Cambridge to other Cambridge residences and during the week. So I think it's really a great expansion of the Memory Cafe projects. Mm -hmm. oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And we should add too that um, that individuals don't have to be a Cambridge resident. They can certainly be a Somerville resident or from sort of outside the Somerville and Cambridge area. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Yeah. And one thing I heard about in these discussions I thought was kind of interesting was there's sort of a collaborative spirit. When, when SECS was starting the new Memory Cafe, we checked in with uh, the, the current one, the one that existed before, and to make sure that it wasn't conflicting. Sort of like they try to harmonize so that if you are looking for that social experience, they don't all fall on that same day of the month. You can sort of uh, rotate a bit. So mm -hmm. I thought that was a pretty yeah. interesting detail. Yeah, JFC, uh, JF and CS keeps a nice um, calendar of all of the memory cafes statewide. So that was one of the first things that we looked at to make sure that we wouldn't be conflicting um, with another cafe in case people wanted to go to multiple. And there are people that do go to multiple you know, cafes around their community. Because all the cafes are open and free to the public and they're a great recreational idea. So if you are someone who is home and isolated, they're a great way to be part of a community and it, you, you, you could live in Cambridge and go to the one in Quincy. You could live in Cambridge and go to the one in Andover. You could go to the one in Cambridge on both of them. So I think it's really great. Some are held during the day, some are held in the evening, some are held on the weekends. Right. And there's a great memory cafe that's also um, on the weekend and that's part of a garden. So there's oh, wow. lots of different varieties as we talked about um, that's great. format. So. One last question before we wrap up the first sure. segment. Can we talk a little bit how it came that Somerville Cambridge Elder Services was launching a new memory cafe? Yeah, sure. So um, our executive director, John O'Neill, had had the idea of a memory cafe on his radar for a number of years. I think he'd read something about the cafes that started in Minnesota, and I think that's where they started in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, so it was something he had been thinking about for a while. Um, and then it sort of coalesced last year. We got some, we got, uh, so a bequest um, and you know money that we wanted to put toward a project that helps individuals in our communities um, and then we did a dementia conference where we met um, the head of the um, memory cafe or the dementia friendly um, movement in Mass Massachusetts, Beth Salzburg, um, and sort of through that conference and talking to the uh, director at the Cambridge Council on Aging, Susan Pacheco, who'd also wanted to start one, it just sort of came together that this was the time to do it. Um, and we had from, you know, meeting with Beth, a good idea of, of how we could do it and that it actually was um, realistic for us. Around that time, too, we started meeting um, with uh, a group of local memory cafe um, uh, coordinators, Nancy being one of them, um, and realized that Nancy could help us coordinate this cafe as well. So that sort of came together. Um, and, and we started this uh, Cambridge Connections in August this year. Very exciting. Was it drum circles? Uh, we did drum circles in September. Our first one was um, crafts. Mm -hmm. We actually developed our own centerpieces for our cafe. And um, this month we're going to do dance. Sounds great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all for this segment of Aging Well. We'll be right back in a moment with some more Aging Well. <music> and welcome back to Aging Well, a monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb. 
Our topic today is memory cafes. We have a couple of experts on that topic in the studio with us today. Uh, we have Nancy Quig Gonzalez, who's the coordinator for the Cambridge Connections Memory Cafe, and we're also welcoming into the studio for this segment Mary Ellen from the Cambridge Council on Aging. Hi. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself for a moment? So I'm Mary Ellen McElhaney, and I am the Information and Referral Specialist at the Cambridge Council on Aging. Welcome to the studio. We're glad to have you. So I guess we'll just sort of circle back a little bit and talk about what is uh, the Cambridge Connections Cafe? So the Cambridge Connections Cafe is the name that we came up with for the new memory cafe that's happening at the Citywide Senior Center on the third Fridays of every month from 10 to 12. Excellent. And, um, and it's a joint venture with the Senior Center, which we're, we're thrilled to have you here. So what sort of activities or identity were we looking for when we decided to put this one together? So what's wonderful is the cafe has just gotten underway. We've had two, and the third one will be the third Friday of October. So we'll have the opportunity to form an identity and, and welcome everyone and kind of let participants guide where we go. So far, we have had a drum circle, which is a wonderful way to kind of just eat, participate as much as you want in to the music that's being made. We're very lucky that we will be having a dance troupe this coming Friday, again the third Friday of October. So we'll see where we go from there, but we'll have the opportunity to incorporate crafts and various activities. I guess that's true. I probably should have thought of that before asking. It's like you're trying to build an identity, but it sort of reflects the people who go. Yeah, because one of the memory cafes is the ability for the participants as you develop your core group to kind of drive the activities. Mm -hmm. What did their interests, what do they like to do, what would they like to see? You know, most of the cafes are always around art and music because that. Mm -hmm. And everybody kind of relates. Today's music, older music, and art can be a vast array. And so a lot of the activities are around that. But they can be, as, you know, board games, they can be dance, mm. they can be chair yoga, they can be stretching, you can learn a move. Uh, there's lots of different activities that you can do at cafes. That's great. So if you've never been to a cafe before, or you've never been to the Cambridge Connections Cafe, what, what should you know before going? Well, that you are welcome, and we hope that everyone who is interested will take the opportunity to come. It is in the Senior Center, Citywide Senior Center, at Mass Ave in Central Square. So it's a vibrant setting. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to learn about other activities that also happen in the community and the center as well. Um, but most important is that there's no expectation. You can just come, enjoy yourself, participate as much as you like, and hopefully meet some new friends. Mm -hmm. And they don't necessarily have to be registered with the city, the city and the Citywide Senior Center. They don't have to participate in any other activities if they just want to come for the Memory Cafe. But our hope would be as they come and see the Memory Cafe on the second floor, and as they're guided through to the elevators and up, the, up to the second floor, they have an opportunity to see the calendar of events and see the other great activities that are being held at the Senior Center that are available for them. And any do's or don'ts for going? So, you know, the do's, you know, you can register or you can just show up, which is great. Um, we are, as memory cafes, we're not a drop-off service, so nor are we respite. So anybody that requires a care partner or a caregiver, we ask that the caregiver remain with them. Um, but I think other than that, there aren't really a whole lot of don'ts. Yeah. Do have fun. Yes. Do enjoy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. Uh, one thing during our conference when they were, we had that segment on memory cafes was I thought an interesting part was about the sort of overall tone of memory cafe. You come in and there's not, there's not like any discussion about your forgetfulness or something like that. It's not what it's like. Can you tell me a little bit, maybe articulate a little better than I am? Right, so the idea of the Memory Cafe is that anyone who may be experiencing forgetfulness or any change in thinking can come and put that aside and come and enjoy themselves where there's no discussion or expectation that someone share what their current condition is. Uh, it's really an opportunity to say, I'm going to have fun today. I'm going to take a break from my schedule, my time at home, 
wherever I may spend my day, and I'm going to meet some new friends and, and uh, enjoy myself. Sounds great. Well said. Yep. Oh, that's fantastic. And you have been coordinating the other cafe in Cambridge. Uh, which organization was it again? Um, Cambridge Family and Children's Services. Uh, for uh, over a year? About a year and a half now. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the things that have really worked with that uh, cafe so far? So for the group that attends that one, um, they're really into the art and the music. And uh, believe it or not, we're huge board game buffs. Mm. So, you know, occasionally you will have at the last minute a, a guest artist not available to be able to be there. And our go-to activity for that group is a set of board games that we have. And we actually are creative and make a new game out of the board games. So it's kind of very interesting. We've done the drum circles. We've done karaoke. Mm -hmm. um, We've done a, fall, a virtual fall foliage tour where we've used YouTube channels mm. and a screen and we've taken a virtual tour with sights and sounds that people associate with the fall season. Mm. Oh, that's great. And if people want to learn more about either the Cambridge Connections Cafe or the other one, uh, how would they go about doing that? What's the best way to get in touch? So either by phone numbers, um, so each one of the cafes have a, a phone line that's dedicated to it, or by emails, so that's really great. Um, they can put that information up and see it on Facebook and Twitter as well too, mm -hmm. as well as Cambridge Council on Aging and Somerville Cambridge Elder Services websites. I think we'll have a graphic that will go up during the show too that hopefully will provide that. I'm, I'm not a numbers guy, I'll totally admit it. Anything else we want to add during this segment? Please give us a, a call or, or come on by if you'd like to participate. We'd love to have you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for this segment of Aging Well. We'll be right back with our final segment. And welcome back to Aging Well monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. It's our final segment of Aging Well for this month on memory cafes and we're going to talk a little bit now about dementia friendly communities. We're going to sort of broaden the discussion out and for that discussion we've welcomed Annie back into the studio. Thank you. And uh, Nancy's with us and so yeah I guess basically dementia friendly communities can you give me a, a sort of an outline of what that's all about? Sure, I'll, I'll let you start and fill in if that's okay. Oh, that would be fabulous, thank you. So it's for those people who are living with dementia, it's having um, organizations and communities take a look at their community, whether it be the parks, whether it be community activities, whether it be access, whether it be hospitals and uh, places where people who are older visit more frequently and looking at them and making sure that they are accessible but also the environment is accessible. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing is uh, about the dementia friendly initiatives is that part of that is the memory cafes is actually goes to the support piece of the dementia friendly communities. Well, that's great. So it's, it's a step forward in that, that area. Yeah, exactly. I mean the idea is that individuals that have some memory loss or some forgetfulness are not generally just sitting at home. They're out in the community, they're going to the library, they're going to the bank, they're going to their hairdresser. Mm -hmm. um, but it can be a little, you know, overwhelming or perhaps confusing for the individuals that work in places, in the, you know, the kind of our local public places or for the individual with memory loss. We want to make sure that the people in the community um, are sensitive to individuals with memory loss and know that there are supports like the memory cafes, like Somerville Cambridge Elder Services and the Councils on Aging um, where, where, where individuals can go for more information and support. Oh, that's excellent. So the memory cafes are definitely one piece. Can you tell me a little bit about anything else that's happening in Somerville and Cambridge with uh, Dementia Friendly? So Somerville and Cambridge has gotten together um, and hosted a couple of uh, joint breakfasts where we've developed a, a working group um, in Somerville and Cambridge that includes, of course, Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, the Council on Aging from both cities, as well as the mayors from both cities, and um, some other interested parties that would be really great to be part of the movement. And it combines the 
dementia-friendly initiative along with the age-friendly initiative. So a lot of the senior centers have the age-friendly, but the dementia-friendly kind of takes into account some of the social pieces as well as the awareness campaigns. And um, I think some of the great initiatives that are beginning to start, it's just in its working stages now, a core group has been put together, is um, some of the purple table reservations. And that is uh, people in restaurants can set aside a certain table that is for those with um, forgetfulness or memory loss, whether it's uh, dementia and Alzheimer's diagnosis, but also other disabilities as well in a sensory free environment. Mm. And it's a little more catered to their needs and so that they can still participate in the community. Mm. A lot of the great discussions we've had in memory cafes is over the reorganization in Somerville and Cambridge of the bike lanes. And so the bike lanes, um, people who are used to driving and used to parking next to curbs, it has been difficult to adjust to parking your car out in the middle of the street. And so some of the memory cafes, we've discussed um, how you, you know, adapt to this new environment. And, and again, we want to include people, but we also want to include people with bicycles as well, too. Mm -hmm. So it's all about inclusion as well. Sensory free environment, what's, what's that? So it's, you know, so you go into a, so for the purple tables, it's, you go into a busy restaurant mm -hmm. and sometimes you get seated outside the kitchen or you get seated near the front door where there's people walking ah. and it's a lot of distractions for somebody who has forgetfulness or memory loss. And so you take a table that's kind of set aside, but it's still part of the restaurant. You're still getting the same service mm. without all those distractions and noise mm. and some of the limitations that come with dining out. Mm. And uh, areas for improvement, have any of those been recognized? I know you, it sounds like you're in the very early phases of the discussions. Has there been anything targeted for improvement? Yeah, I think, um, like we were talking about earlier, I think growing things like the, um, the purple table idea to, to, to include more and more restaurants, um, and then to focus on groups, you know, like hairdressers and banks and places where, you know, older adults are, might go, or just any adults really, because we've learned that memory loss doesn't just affect older adults um, anymore, and people are out in the community, and they can be, and doing, you know, doing what it is that they like to do. So making sure that um, you know our local businesses have an understanding of, of memory loss and where they might be able to direct someone if they're starting to see confusion to the point where it might be a little unsafe. Mm. An example of that is often banks. If individuals are coming in and taking money out every day, maybe forgetting that they'd taken money out the day before, that you know bank tellers know that they could call elder services or the Council on Aging to get more information and support, or that they could. Uh, um, direct an individual to one of our organizations or to the memory cafes. Mm -hmm. And the memory cafes can sort of serve as a gateway to the other services that might be available. So that's, you know, one area that I think we would like to, to focus on in our communities. So Those are great suggestions. Yeah. Non-elder specific organizations. Like yes, exactly. Not, yes, yes, exactly. Yes, that, but, but that organizations that certainly serve elders mm -hmm. or, you know, any, any adults of any age. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe money management might be one of the programs they could be referred to under the bank. Exactly. Example. Yes. I mean, yeah, managing money is probably one of the first sort of areas that might start to show some unsafe behaviors when someone has a memory memory loss. And as yes, of course, as you know, we have a memory management program that or money management program that could be a great benefit to an individual. Oh, that's excellent. Well, we're just about out of time, if there's anything else you want to add. I was just going to say that there's definitely more information online about dementia-friendly uh, communities. We're going to have the information on that posted uh, during the show so people will see it on the screen. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to add before we call I today? I think with the work group, you know, um, there's a symposium coming up next month, which I'm going to attend. And I'm hoping as our work group develops uh, some plans from that symposium that we do some community town hall events to kind of get p other people involved in the conversations. And like Annie has said, 
discussing with banks and hairdressers and place where every, grocery stores where everybody visits pharmacies and yeah. really getting people engaged in the conversation. It's yeah. been very successful throughout the state of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. excellent. I guess I'd just like to add if you're an individual who thinks you're experiencing some memory loss or if you're a caregiver or if you're a business owner or work in a business in this area and you and you want more information either about the cafes or memory loss in general um, to give us a call or send us an email to either us or the Council on Aging and we'd be happy to kind of start a conversation about what information and supports are out there. Thank you. You guys have been fantastic guests. Thank you so much for joining me here today in the studio. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the time we have this month for Aging Well. We'll see you next time. Thanks again.